Your way around there? A little bit. Fancy. I'm on the, on the 202. Yeah, very close to that. Yeah. Okay, who learned Chitas today? Me uh, Tanya. Tanya. Uh, a bunch of, a bunch of Hasidic people. Ah, uh, ah, uh, so you learned Chumash. Maybe if you learn this, you can learn it last. If you learn it tonight, it's considered half You're allowed to learn Chumash at night? It's for Hitas. Possibly. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Alright, so in this week's parsha, today's Hitas, it's the Torah says, the Zvulan Amar, Smach Zvulan Bitsei Translated, the Zvulan should be happy when he goes out. Yisachar will be happy in his tent. So we all, everybody knows that the, the, the partnership that Yisachar and Zvulun made, Yisachar was the learning, so they were in the oil, and the Zvulun was the one out in the business. But if you pay attention to Rashi, Rashi, Rashi's not saying, okay, if you do things right, you might invest in it, you get a good tip, you'll, you'll be successful. He says it as a fact. He says, Smach Zvulun B'tzei Secha. Says Rashi. Says Rashi, Smach Zvulun B'tzei Secha. Hatzlach B'tzei Secha L'Schera. You will be, you will be successful when you go out to do business. And by Yisachar, he also says, Hatzlach, you will be successful when you sit and learn Torah. And if you ask anybody uh, who made this partnership with people, uh, there's a whole long discussion, who's the greater one? Is Zvulun the greater one for supporting the learning of Torah, or the one who, who actually sits and learns the Torah is the greater one? And there's a, there's, there's a big debate about that. So what, is, what does it say later on? When I saw this Chumash today, I thought about, uh, over here, I thought about the Sin City. The Pasik says in today's Chumash, Amim Har Yukrosham. Nations, and there's a mountain that people will always go, go toward. Call there. Says Rashi. Says Rashi. Why are people coming there? Rashi says like this, a little further. Aidei prak makishel zvulin, since zvulin did business, and they were good, nice people. So they were doing; they weren't doing business with the Baba of with the. They were doing, uh, doing business. Excuse me. In the middle of a speech against you. Yeah. <laughs> with nice people. They were doing business with goyim. Yeah. They were doing business with goyim. The goyim are nice people. Right. So because they were doing business with goyim and they were doing it, masoy matoni by muna, they do it. In, in, in just it, so the tagre or the guy is a business the guy is a businessman with boy a large which come to the port to do business with zvulun sure. zvulun was a, was a wheeler and dealer and they were buying and selling and the guy came to buy from zvulun and they saw what kind of great people they were yeah who I met Al Asfar and Zvulun was at the port. So the Goyim come along and say, Ho Yovinitstar and Luat Khan, since we, we went through the whole trouble of coming all the way schlepping here to visit the people of Zvulun, let's already let's already do it. Let's go check them these people out. They're nice business. Let's let's find out more about them. Let's see what they call home, their homeland. Let's see if they're such nice Let's go to Yerushalayim. Venida, and let's check out Ma Yer Aser Shol Umazu, Umar Marcel. Who who do they fear? Who is their God? And what do what do they do? What's so special about them? Vehem Royim, they would they went to Yerushalayim, and they would see Kol Yisroim, Kol Yisrael, Avdim Lelika Echod. All Jews are serving one God. Vaeichlim Michael Echon. They're all eating the filter fish. They're all eating. Not sushi, not you know. They're all eating a, a good Jew, Jewish Michael, kosher Michael. So, the fee, 
when they came and they saw this, they said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here there's a whole nation all serving one God and all focused on the, They could be all over the place, but they, they're they focused as one one people, one nation, one God. And we, the Eide Kechavim, what this guy worships is not what the other. Everybody, this guy worships a tree. This guy worships a Buddhist. This guy does a every cockamamie person who decides he makes a religion has a religion. It's running, I think. Huh? Is it running? Yeah. Um, and this guy's sushi, and that guy's eating a uh, what? Everybody has their own makeup of food. There is no, there's no, uh, there's no th- uniformity. The hein Imrim, so the goyim would say, ain umra kesheda kazu. The goyim would say there is no better kosher nation like the, than like the Jewish nation, umisgayim sham, and that would cause them to do to become get converted. Oh. You pay attention to what happened here. Zvulun was in it for business. Zvulun was in it because they made a business. They were a successful businessmen, and they also not only they had to support their family, they took it upon themselves to support all the yeshivas, all the chabad houses. So they were doing it for the business. But because they were impressive and, how, and honest in how they did business, what happens is the goyim were so, uh, so they, they so loved it so much that it caused them to become to convert. You know that people don't know this. We said this in, in Slicha so many times. We quoted a Pasik. Kibesi vest vila yukare lecholam. Literally. Which means what? Kibesi vest vila yukare lecholam. It means, I remember I went once with JLI to Israel and uh, everybody's giving this speech. Just because I, I don't know, I got, I got stuck saying something. I said, people don't realize the base Hamikdash wasn't only a house of prayer for the Jews. Kibesi based filo yukare lechol ha'amim. And somehow we have to run our life in such a way that we have to impress not only our fellow Jew to uh, to become better or stay intact. Somehow, not necessarily it's our mission, but you, we just do what we're supposed to do right and automatically Automatically, things are are going to be uh, are going to be good even for the goyim. Okay, well, so goyim also wants to be mikdash. They don't. They they feel us go through the base of mikdash. Based feel you cut it. Okay, but they wouldn't actually physically go inside. They can't because it's, 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 it's mayim. Uh-huh. <laughs> but but you cut it the could also mean that they call it the house of prayer. But it, anyways, so I thought about this. Why did I think about this? Because. Obviously, everybody everybody's involved in Gashmis. There's, there's once a, a chassid came to the Rebbe Marash, and it was a real, real chassid. So he gave a pan. He gave a pan to the Rebbe Marash, but instead of writing all his requests on one piece of paper, he separated on two pieces of paper. The spiritual in Yonim he wrote on one piece of paper, and the Gashmis in Yonim he wrote on a, a separate piece of paper. And he gave it to the Rebbe Marash. The Rebbe Marash says no, no. Don't on the top of the other. Which one did he put on top? Uh-huh. So the Rebbe says it's not two separate things. By Yidin, the Gashmis and the Ruchnius have to be intertwined, because even when, even though, even though we are stuck to do Gashmis, but everything we do in Gashmis has, you know, I believe Yitzchak Mibaditchev used to say, well, again, another thing that we kept on saying in, in Shmei Nazarei. Now over the Aseret Mechuvah, Leman Chalikim Lachaim, Zachreinu Lachaim. Please, God, remember us for life. Lamancha, for your sake. What do you mean for your sake? What kind of talk is that? So I believe Yitzchak used to say, what, what do you mean? What is a Yid going to do if he wins the lottery? What is he going to do? He's going to build another yeshiva, another shul, another chabados. So every, our good well, well-being is, you're the only one that's going to profit. You're, you, you, are, you are in this together. And it works both ways. It works actually both ways. It works in the positive sense that when a yid is, is successful, when a yid is successful, uh, Hashem benefits. And Rahman al Tzlan, there's a very famous, beautiful vart from Baruch Mimezhebush. And Baruch Mezhebush, if he's going to eat something, he should be in the sugar. Baruch Mezhebush, 
used to used to discuss what is it that when we say the ashamnu, we say vidu, we say ashamnu, we say we've committed a crime, we've done this wrong, we've who's we, who's we, S- say singular, I've I've committed a crime, I stole, but why are we saying ashamnu plural? So everybody knows the taich that you know the question is also asked why would a tzaddik say it? If a tzaddik didn't commit none of the crimes that I mentioned there, so it says in Chassidus, because all the neshamas are make up one goof, so the tzaddik is the head of the goof, and the, the layman is the lower part of the goof, but we all stole one goof. So the tzaddik could say we committed a crime because his toe, when it, when your toe kicks something, it, the whole body kicks something. But that's that's the answer why a tzaddik could say it. But why is it we talk to Hashem and we say Hashem knew, but God knew. So Baruch Mibajim, but she gave the most beautiful answer. And we have to really believe in this. He used to say, Abishter, God, let's be let's let's put let's commit let's let's talk tachlis. A person is only a person when he has the combination of an ashama and a goof. You know we you know there used to be a movement, there was a movement of uh, organization, they wanted that every house or every shul should have a poster by the bathroom, the poster of Asher Yatsar. The bracha you make out of it. They, there was one one time I remember that... Yeah, came from months. I came from months? Yeah, it was yeah. before... I, when I was in Minnesota, I remember it was a big thing, all the shul. We have now, one. You have the... Okay, what's so special? For the water fountain. All right. It's not, it's not for the water fountain. For the washing fountain, right yeah. between the bathrooms. Yeah. Why is it so special? What's so special about that bracha? Mm-hmm. I think it, it's important to note, I know personally somebody who became a who became a Balchuva because he went to medical school and he saw how God created the human body and everything about the body is so wondrous how the eyelashes are meant to protect the eyes and the fingernails he said there, is a, there must be a God it's wondrous a piece of art how the apes creates the body but with the end of the bracha of Ashiyata we say umafli God creates every human being. Umafli lasos. Umafli lasos. And he does wonders. What's he doing wonders? What kind of wonders is he doing? So the simple translation that he does wonders, like I said, the body is a wonderful piece of piece of art. You couldn't put it together if you weren't guard. The whole system of the immune system, all that. But the Avud Raham gives a, a beautiful shot. Avud Raham says, Umafli lasos is a, the fact that two opposites could live together. Guf and Neshama could coexist in one body, that's a wondrous. That's a wonder. That's a mafli lasses. So our Baruch Mimejibus used to say, Hashem, you're the Neshama, I'm the Guf. We are the Guf. We are the physical part. You are our life. You are our Neshama. A Guf without a Neshama is a deadbeat doesn't, can't act, can't move, doesn't do anything. So any action that we do, we have to attribute to your movement, to your life in us. So if I sin, we sin. Hashem, your neshama, with your life that instilled in me and gave me some movement, we did it together. And that's why we say Hashem. And that's why we say Lush and Rabbi. Huh? You claim Hashem that's how you say Hashem. Without you, I couldn't. So it's not only when you do good, you credit Hashem for uh, what was done. You really, really believe that Hashem is involved in everything you do mm-hmm. and wherever you do. He's with us and everywhere. Bingo. It's good not to feel ashamed of what you did. Right. You're a part of the problem. Before they say the blessing, they say Hashem. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know what the in davening, what Sukkot is titled. Zman Simchaseinu. Zman Simchaseinu. Why from all the holidays is Sukkot Zman Simchaseinu? You know, Michael? I think, uh, learn a step about I, it. I think the Chayv thing is that uh, the Pesach when they came out of the Torah, and then the Shavuos when they actually get the Torah, and then Sukkot being the first real Yom that they were actually able to enjoy after the Torah. Enjoy in what way? As in properly fulfill it, as opposed to... The time of uh, the joy. I think it's connected to the lulav and the sukkah. You Why? put the lulav to your heart because it's not just like the. This is my joy of simchas. Right. 
and comes to the lulav, it's going to your heart, and then you're in the whole sukkah, everything's going to go. Your seichel is also involved in the joy. No, but the zim, that's the, the ultimate joy. The again, brings the zim. Why you you're just shifting the question from one part to another part? Why does it bring zim? Why is nisachamayim so the most joyous time? Why, what's about sukkahs that brings out the most joy so more than sweet. more than pesach? More than uh, Pesach, we were saved from the Torah. Who's Pogolai? But not probably the same answer. Yeah, the seltzer. Why did she get the harvest? Harvest is coming. All right, so the simple answer is what you're saying, that that Chaga Asif, because now you have the fruit of the, your labor, you have it in your house. You know, uh, you remind me of the, of the Chalomer. The Chalomer was out in the field collecting. And he says to himself, oh boy, why did God create the feet? Why did God create uh, He created the feet so he should be able to bring the potatoes from the field to the house. Why did he create the hands to be able to carry the potatoes? Why did God create the head? He was stuck. He went to the sage and they came to, they came to an answer. He created the hat, so he created the head, so he should have a place where to put his baseball bat. Uh, the head is what we think with. That's why we need a hat. All right. So chaga asif is the simple taiches. Then you're able to uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor. You see it. You brought it home. Another answer is because it's the first holiday that comes right after Yom Kippur. You're forgiven for all your sins. What better celebration is there? I, I want to give you two thoughts that came through my mind. This this Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. Why, why are people depressed? Why are people depressed? Why not? Why not? People are depressed because they're limited. They're restricted. When you, when you release the, res the restrictions, you feel a, a sense of relief. What is um, huh? that, that the fake relief? Though. Not a fake relief. When you when you sometimes, sometimes we need when somebody when, when you're, you're happy. Why is why ain't chavish matter asim You're right. You're right. Take take somebody. What? What? Not, not about you. And if and it is, I don't care. No, that's <laughs> take, so, take somebody who's tied now, down with the rope down the hill. Pass the yeah. chips, please. He's so, glad that he's limited. Chips. He ain't happy. He's happy he's limited. He's enjoying his, his rock climbing. Yeah, oh, he's enjoying whatever adventure he's doing. Right? So but he's grateful that he's limited. So a person, he's limited. So a, person limited. a person who is restricted, a, grip. a person who is restricted, a person who has limitations doesn't have joy. A person, oh, but a person who uh, a person who feels released when you come out of prison and you feel relieved, released. You're the you're you're the happiest person. What what could make me feel released from restrictions? What well, realizing that this restriction is good for me? It's not, it's more than that. What makes me release from all the restrictions, feel feel relief. Mendy, make sure everybody's in the sukkah. Whoever's eating, Mendy, Mendy, hello, you in the sukkah. Whoever is eating should make yeah. a lation about sukkah. So we should move down. This is a tape about sukkah. This not tape. What are you saying? Why are you making up I did it. I got from the right there. Stop bringing it. Let's go. Get a little closer. Let's go. Technically, there is an advantage for sitting on the sofa. Take the M, like, for example. Okay, listen. You want to hear? Jaffin. 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 So, from, from from so when you when you, when you're released from your <coughs> limitations, when you're released from your restrictions, when you're taken out of prison, you're happy. How could a person run, go in the world, live in this world, and feel unrestricted? You know how? The sukkah reminds us: we are our own restrictions. We are our own limitations. We, when the moment you feel that you're in, 
that it's your life, your decisions, and your actions that's that's creating your success and failures, you're very, very limited. You are cho you're in a chokehold. But when you believe and honestly believe it's Hashem that's running the world, then you're then you're on the on the on, on the highway. What's that lane called? Where the oh? What's it called? What's the carpool? The carpool lane when everything else is is congested. Because you have you realize it's the Abishta running the world, and the Abishta has no limitations. And the minute you connect to the Abishta, you have no. There's nothing to be worried about. You know. What's the point of the sukkah? The point of the sukkah is you're going outside. You're not in your house. It's all Abishter. It's all Abishter. The minute you, you you focus and you take yourself out of the picture, mm -hmm. it's not me. It's not I'm not the one that's causing me the my, my success. I'm not a failure. It's it's Hashem's plan. If you put yourself in Hashem's hands, how can't you be happy? Well, there's nothing holding you back. There's nothing nothing holding you back. Right. But Samech Mechalkei. So Melech Mechalke is is a, a prat in that. So that's what you, you like that or not? Yes or no? You like that or not? Yeah. The moment you the moment you put yourself in Hashem's hands, then you have no restrictions, because Hashem is unlimited, and you, you sit outside in the sukkah saying, "Listen, it's not the the stocks that's making me rich; it's Hashem that's making me rich." It's not. It's not the my brains that make me smart. It's the talents that Hashem gave me, and all that. <laughs> so you put yourself in that. You plug into that plug. There's no restrictions. There's no limitation. It's limit. It's unlimited. That's one side of the coin. Now I'm going to twist it to the other side of the coin. Why is there? Why are there? Why are there other reasons? There are two different reasons to become depressed. We have Baruch Hashem many reasons to. One is because, because we are restricted, and I answer that by uh, tapping into the Abishter. And from the other hand, there's a different reason to be uh, depressed. Maybe the job is too big for us. Sometimes when the Gemara says, actually Gemara Sukkah, it says, for the Rishayim, uh, uh, it will look like a har. What, what the job they were supposed to do and they didn't do was like a mountain. When a person is just becoming close to Yiddish guy, even the FFB, when a person wants to do Yiddish guy, if he if he takes Yiddish guy as as the pasuk says, Arucha Me'aretz Midor Chavim Miniyam, there's no limit, there's no end to Yiddish guy. Then he, there's there's sometimes the person says, I give up, I give up, I'll never I'll never be perfect, I'll never be perfect. So why even try? Right, so that's a, that's the other reason to fail. I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna answer that part. There's a Rashima from the Rebbe, where the Rebbe says like this about Sukkis. The Rebbe says there's a pasuk that the Navi says that La'asid Lavi, when Mashiach comes, and even though the pasuk is a pasuk that speaks about when Mashiach comes, we use it in Allah to teach us how many walls a Sukkah has to be. The Torah says that this, there, there, there will be a hut, a sukkah, let's sail for shade, for uh, for uh, to sit in, sit under, and it says it would be a protection le le zerem which uh, which literally translation translates the hut, the sukkah that will be there will will protect you from zerem, from strong winds and from rain, bad winds and rain. All right, seems to be a harmless pasuk. Says the Rebbe, only the Rebbe could do this. What's the significance of zerem and matah? Sukkah, what's current? Zerem is current. Current. So the Rebbe says like this: zerem. What's the what's the three letters? Zayin, reish, mem, which is flip around the letters is reish, mem, zayin. Reish, mem, zayin is. is 247. 247. Motor is rain. Is two mem tes is 249. What's in the middle? What's missing? We have 247 and we have 249. The sukkah, the, sukkah is the sukkah is protecting us from the 247 and the 249. 
What is it? it says the Rebbe, the Eibush, they gave us 248 mitzvahs. Right, right in the middle. No, nobody, nobody should take off a mitzvah and nobody should add a mitzvah. It's exactly what the Eibush, they gave us. Now, that's a restriction. That's a limitation. And that is, I, I think I think the depth of that word is in twofold. Number one, as I said before, if a person looks at Yiddish guy like it's a mountain, like it's limitless, it's it's unlimited, it's so deep and it's so much, you can be more chassidish and more from, and I'm never going to be from enough. But if you know there's a number, there's a number. There's 248. Mm-hmm. You know, he, there's a lot of people like him who learn smicha. But why do they learn smicha? If a person calls me and says, I want to get a certificate, I say, go, go, go to Walmart, you get a certificate. If you want to get a certificate, but that's a judging cup. A judging cup is that, that they that they, they want to pay, they want a limit. Yiddishkeit is really not about li- limit. It's it's being connected. But the way the way the connection really works is if you know, you know, I can I can make it. I don't in Yiddish there is a saying, there are two sayings in Yiddish that uh, fit this word. <laughs> Adara Malach, Adara Galach. You ever heard that saying? Some people make a mistake and say, either I'll be a Jew, either I'll be an angel, or I'll be a priest. There's nothing in between. Adara Malach, either either a picture perfect and I'm, a, I'm, I'm an angel, or uh, I, I got forbid I'm a priest. No, you don't have to be an angel, and you definitely not want to be a priest. Be you, could, you, could, you, could, you could do what's right. Okay. So the, the mistake is when you think you have to be a Malach. You don't have to be a Malach. The Abish to put us in this world with all the tests, and the Abish to knows exactly what we're going for, through, and the Abish says, I want these 248. Do as much as you could do on the, on these 248. I gave you a limit. Don't add, don't take, don't subtract. That's not what you're here for. You're here to do what you're told to do. So there, in other words, it, it, it minimizes the avoid of forever and ever. From the other hand, from the other end. Not restricted. Huh? Not restricted at all. Is that the other hand? What's the other hand? The other hand is that people feel restricted also. On the one hand, you should know there's a limit. You don't have to do everything. There's no. On the other hand, feeling restricted is a problem, meaning that. Right, so there's a, bo- there's a little of both. Right. And both of them is the sukkah. The sukkah t- 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 tells you both. The sukkah tells you that the, I'm tapping into the abishter, and the abishter is unlimited. And the sukkah also tells you it's can. here to protect you from the, from the 247 versus the 249. Right. In Hilchas Pesach, there is a halacha that's a very fascinating thing. You know, if you go to different homes in Pesach, I, I'm sure it's here, here too. You'll find some people are this from and being machmer Pesach. Some people are this from. Something in Crown Heights is a guy that that puts plastic all over his house, not to step on the uh, on the same walls and uh, okay. There, there's a term in halacha for that, which says Yisrael on Hilchas Pesach. It says Yisrael Kedoshimim. Jews are holy and they, they could be machmer whatever they want. It's the only time you could be machmer. Yeah. Oh, so over there, there's a, there's one of the places in the rights. No ideas, Masha. The, the, uh, one of the no, no, no ideas. Please. One of the places in rights. <laughs> there is a there is a phrase that's Not for me. there is a phrase that's brought in halacha which says a party that's gather in shachun nachash. God forbid if anybody breaks a boundary, any limitation, any boundary that chachamim said, he should be stung by a snake. In other words, if chachamim want limitations, sneers or whatever. If you if you are smart, you're gonna make you're gonna be different, and you're gonna be the first one to. Show it's not important. He should be bit, bitten or whatever, or by stung by a snake. So in one of the poskim it says, this is not only if he's if he's breaking something that the chachamim didn't want. Not only if the chachamim said we want this type of level of kedusha, this type of level of sneer, so this guy, nah, I'm, I, I, I'll break it. It works the other way around. If the chachamim said that this is allowed, this is allowed. Somebody comes along and says, "No, I'll, I'm going to make this not allowed. I'm going to say this is no. We shouldn't be doing that." He's also breaking a boundary. You know why? Because he's he's limiting. He's he's uh, he, he's restricting things that the Abishter didn't want, didn't restrict. So 
there was a there's a story that I, yeah uh, there's a story I even asked Rabbi Krinsky if this is true this story because when I read this I, I, I was freaking out there's a story that somebody once came to Yechidus by the Rebbe and he tells and the Rebbe tells and he was having a problem with Yiddishkeit it's too overwhelming so the Rebbe tells him there's a Pasuk that when the, when uh, Yitzchak was blessing Yaakov and Esau, so first he blessed Yaakov, he gave him the whole nine yards. And Esau comes along, and Esau says, uh, uh, that's what he said, no? Uh, What's that for you? Uh, so he, he, so he said, what should I do? I gave him, I gave, your brother came, Bemirma, come and snuck out the bracha, but he gave him, he gave him a second class bracha, right? But by the end he says, listen, I'm gonna give you a second class bracha. And for now, you're going to have to serve Yaakov. But then listen to these words. Vahoya kasher tarid. It was. Vahoya means, and, and it will be, if it ever happens, God forbid. Right now, Yaakov, the Jews are in control. But if God forbid, kasher tarid, if God forbid Yaakov falls, ufarakta uloy olav. So then your yoke, that you're supposed to serve Yaakov, you're released from that, yeah, that yoke. As long as Yaakov behaves, then you have to serve Yaakov. But your yoke is released. And the Rebbe says to the person, why, why would it happen? And if it would be, if a generation would come along and say, Taryag mitzvah is not good enough. We're going to make Taryad. We're going to add another restriction. You're going to make Yiddishkeit harder for people you add one little member mitzvah then you know what's going to happen the people who are struggling as is are just going to fall are just going to fall question time what how does it work with the seven added restrictions of chachamim so the chachamim there are there are there are the, the sheva mitzvahs the rabbanim which which don't count that the koyach chachamim have to do. I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't include the, the Shem Mitzvah Chacham. Obviously, they have the authority to do it, and they have a, authority to do it based on a reason of the Torah. But if a person says uh, it works in so many different ways, it's, it works in so many different ways. What's an example of something practical example that people actually add on? I haven't, I, I just not, I haven't seen people trying to add things. Put it this way: if, if Yiddishkeit becomes a burden, <laughs> something's wrong. Sure. Something's wrong. Sure. If Yiddishkeit is not. How, if a person sits down a second and thinks, I'm the luckiest man alive. I was chosen by the Abish to be his person, his people. You know, that there was a chassid that used to say, when you say the brach in the morning, shaloya sani goy, it doesn't mean the, the shikr on the street. Ah, thank God I'm not the, the homeless person. It means shaloya sani goy. Thank God I wasn't, I, I wasn't made Biden or Trump. The president of the United States, but the goyim. I have, I have, I'm so up, I'm so much more greater than they am. I was chosen to be Hashem's person. That's not what the Rebbe says in Tanya, because I was chosen, they, how can you, how, how can, if Yiddishkeit is a burden, there's something wrong, there's something wrong in your brain. No, there's something wrong in the Yiddishkeit that you were taught. That, 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 that means, uh, that means in the brain it's wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying, no, exactly, it's, it's not than, in my brain, it's in the Yiddishkeit that I was taught. At, and that be, no, that became what was that in your be, brain? <laughs> Yiddishkeit is not supposed to be hard. Yiddishkeit is supposed to be uh, everything about Yisman Sim Chasenu, Kudei Hashem Yisharim Misam Everything about Torah. The funniest, the funniest halachas. People tell me, tell me one subject that you learn. Thank you. Any subject. You go to college and you master a topic. Class is over. The books are shut. Now I'm going to the bar. Now I'm going to the movie. What I learned five minutes ago, I want to relax. I want to relax. And there's halach and shulchan aruch. You know why? You know why you don't learn on uh, on erev tishah b'av? Because it's a day of mourning. Erev tishah b'av. Because of the Erev tishah Yeah. Because it's still in my head. I'm still being really gonna thinking about it. Because for mourning. No, 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 the no, nine no. days. You, you know why? Because when you learn Torah at of Tisha B'av, the Torah has such a permanent, of, of happy effect on you that you're going to be happy by Tisha B'av. And it's a day so of mourning. So Tisha B'av is not a day of mourning. No more than the other days of, before it. But because Torah is not something like, okay, I, two plus two is four, 
class over. What you learn in turn becomes with the part of you, and, uh, and, and then you're going to be thinking about it. I we once had, <laughs> you want we once had a we once had a, a, a funny thing in, in Minnesota. One guy one guy started singing a niggin and kept on it caught on fire throughout the whole circus. What was the niggin? There was a guy called Yossi Wexler. Maybe like maybe some of you know him. He was a, and and uh, some guy was playing around with his names. And, Yossi Yossi Wexler Yossi Yossi Wexler. That's the one married to Pittsburgh. No, uh, they're both married to Pittsburgh. I said you know Wexler from Pittsburgh. Yossi Yossi Wexler Yossi Yossi Wexler. Okay, and it became a joke yes, for Simcha Steyer. Everybody sing. Ah yeah 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 yeah. That night after Simcha Steyer, his father was a doctor. Is a doctor. His father was carrying out the garbage. Caught himself humming. Yossi, Yossi, yeah. Wexler. Yossi, Yossi. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> that's that's what Yiddish guy does to you. It's not. It does. It's not. I have fun. Luft. It has an effect. You learn. You do a mitzvah. You feel good. You don't only, only feel good. Then, you feel good uh, later too. So if if any person if any person feels that Yiddish guy is a restriction, then he needs a tune up. He needs a tune up. Oh, the low power mode came on. All right, so it's fine. Good. Thank you. Well, we still reminds me when we were in. Uh, when we were in so.